couple of important points when we're using a periosteal elevator. Number one, your periosteal elevators are going to have a double-ended function to them. One's a smaller end, one's a larger end. This is a small end of the feline periosteal elevator. And this is how it's positioned on the patient with the chrome-like finish towards you. Uh, looking at it from the other side, this is more of a milled look, and that is uh, the side that actually goes toward the patient. So when we use this, we want it to be at, uh, at this orientation. And when we start off with a flap, one thing to keep in mind, let's say we're doing a flap to expose the canine tooth for extraction. We start with an incision up here in the diastema between the canine and the incisor. And so that's a vertical releasing incision with a scalpel. We carry it on back to the distal aspect of the third uh, uh, premolar here. And then we use the periosteal elevator initially with the small end, uh, especially on the corners and between teeth to facilitate a safe elevation so that we can remove the bone over the canine tooth in this case and make it an easier extraction by utilizing maximal bone removal. So in using this, the tendency is to push this way with the elevator. So we place it underneath the marginal gingiva and then we want to force it up toward the apical area. That's absolutely not the way that we want to do this. Number one, we don't want it to be parallel to the tooth. Number two, we want it to be at a little angulation, usually about a 15 degree angle. We get down in there underneath the marginal bone and that gingiva underneath the junctional epithelium here is attached to periosteum very firmly throughout a whole zone. So what we want to do is we want to go that periphery of that whole zone of that attached gingiva. So it's really thick here and it starts to trail off a little bit as we get down to the third premolar here. It gets thinner, but the main thing that we want to keep in mind is that we want to work that so that we go throughout that whole margin of attached gingiva initially getting a, about a, a millimeter, millimeter and a half started so that we don't use the elevator in one spot and then put pressure distal and mesial to that elevator, especially with the big end because that pressure point is where that flap's going to rip. So keep in mind, again, orientation here, the small end for especially starting that marginal elevation all the way around. And again, you want to go the entire periphery of that for one to two millimeters, and then that 15 degree angle. And the, one of the most important things is we're not going like this. We're, we're actually lifting that up with a torque with our fingers. So we place it we, we, ch we move our fingers so that it rotates that elevator and moves that tissue off without putting forward pressure on, but mainly putting pressure downward onto the bone. So all of those concepts are the same when we turn that over after we've got that margin started. We use a large end and we can get much more aggressive with that. Again, using the same concept here where we're turning that attached gingiva off of the, the bone. And then once the attached gingiva has been lifted, then we can get more aggressive and we can start to move apical. Again, pressing down on the bone and then moving apical once we're into that unattached gingiva, which releases quite nicely, much easier than it would if it were just the attached gingiva.